All right. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at uh, how different, three different ways to calculate uh, GDP, and those are uh, the output approach. So we've got the output approach here, the income approach, and the expenditure approach. All right. And so, uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Uh, so let's first do the output approach. All right. And this is one that uh, we typically won't use uh, in the testing that we do, but uh, just this is one of the methods that that is out there. And uh, again, you're going to see that all of these approaches, remember, uh, we've got income equals y. This, you know, we did this with the circular flow. Uh, so income is y, expenditure approach is e, and the output approach is the o. Uh, so anyway, so the output approach, uh, the, the way that we're going to go about doing this is to measure, it's a measure of the value, measure, uh, oh, sorry, no, don't do that. <coughs> It's a measure of the value added, okay? And so what does that mean? That means that companies uh, will take a certain product, uh, they'll buy the inputs for whatever they're going to make, and so they'll buy the raw materials, and then they'll take those materials and convert them into something that's more desirable uh, that people would want to purchase. All right, and so what we want to do is uh, look at each stage of production of a good and determine the value added at each stage of production. And so uh, we did some birdhouses the other day. So let's go ahead and do birdhouses again. So we're, we're birdhouse manufacturing. So what we want to do is go back and look at the different stages. And so let's say that uh, we have a person here and they own a plot of land, a plot of land. All right. And on that land, there's a bunch of trees. All right. And so they decide that they're going to allow a timber company to come and cut the trees down for the wood. And they're going to charge $500 to allow them to cut the wood, cut the wood down. All right, and so, so this is the landowner. All right, and then we have the timber company. And so they, they send people in, and they chop all the trees down. And then they have a factory, and they turn uh, those pieces of wood into two-by-fours. All right, and so they've taken this raw material, and they've converted it into uh, two-by-fours, which is more of a finished product. And let's say that the value of those two-by-fours is $5,000. All right. So then we have the birdhouse maker. So uh, birdhouse maker. They're going to go to the timber company, and let's say that they buy all $5,000 worth of the wood. And what do they do with this wood? They turn it into birdhouses. And so let's say that uh, there we get the birdhouses. So they're the ones making the birdhouses. And let's say they make a bunch of them, and the value of the birdhouses that they produce is $15,000. All right? Now, finally, this is just the manufacturer of it. Now we need to get them on the store shelves. And so uh, they we have the retailer that buys them, let's say that, uh, let's make up a name for the company, For the Birds. How about that? For the Birds. This is the name of this uh, retail store in, a, in a malls across America. Uh, and they have a bunch of birdhouses. And the value of the birdhouses that they buy is valued at, they price them, they try to sell them for a total of $25,000. All right. And so you can see that as we've gone through the process, value has been added to each of the at each of the individual levels. And so when we get the to do the output approach, what do you think we should do here? Should we just add up all the numbers? So 500 plus 5,000 plus 15,000 plus 25,000. We don't want to do that. Okay, so don't do addition. All right, because when we had this initial $500, when this money was paid for $500, they turned it into the timber, and the timber was worth worth 5,000. Now, how much value did they add? Well, the value initially was already 500, and now the value is 5,000, and so they added an additional $4,500 worth of value to this wood. All right. When the birdhouse makers, so we got this is the original amount, $500. So the birdhouse, the timber people bought the wood, turned it into a product that was worth $5,000. All right. And so they added $4,500 worth of value. Then they sold their timber to the birdhouse manufacturer for $15,000. Well, the, I'm sorry, the birdhouse manufacturer 
may produce birdhouses that they valued at $15,000. And so they took $5,000 worth of wood and turned it into $15,000 worth of birdhouses. And so how much value did they add to the original amount? And so they bought the wood at $5,000. It now sells for $15,000. So they must, this group here, must have added an additional $10,000 worth of value to the timber. All right, and then finally, for the birds, bought these bird houses and they valued them at $25,000. All right, oops, let me draw that arrow. So they bought uh, the bird houses for $15,000 and they turned them into sale for $25,000. And so through the promotion and the store and all that stuff, uh, they added another $10,000 worth of value because they went from the bird houses being worth $15,000 now the birdhouses are worth twenty-five thousand, and so we would say that they also, that the retailer, also added ten thousand dollars worth of value. And then this is where you would add everything up, and so we've got five hundred from the landowner, an additional four forty-five hundred dollars worth of value added to the from the timber company, an additional ten thousand dollars added from the birdhouse maker, and finally the retailer uh, gives us an additional ten thousand dollars. And so you would say that this is worth a total of. $25,000. And that would be the GDP. If this were the only thing being produced in the country, this would be the GDP by the output approach. All right, and so we're measuring the output of the, the value added at each stage in production. And so this is what we would do uh, for the macro economy. We'd look at different industries, and so we'd say, okay, the mining industry, how much value do they have? Uh, and then we would look at uh, the, the, the people who produce the metal from the, the, the mining and what, what amount of value do they add to it, and so, so on and so forth. And so this is what the, the GDP uh, measurement by the output method is. All right, so that's the first one. I'm trying to squeeze the income method in here as well. All right, and so the income method simply looks at all the wages earned in the economy through production, earned through production. And I shouldn't use wages here. I should use because there's different types of income. So let me erase this. All income, income on, all income earned through production. Okay, and so uh, we can kind of look at it back up here. All right, and so we, well, let me refresh here. Uh, so we've got, uh, if you remember the circular flow, the income is made up of wages paid to laborers, interest paid for capital, uh, the R, having a little brain malfunction here, rent, sorry, rent for the land, and then profit, and these are for the business owners. And there are a lot of other subtle, more subtle technicalities to this income approach, but this, we're going to follow the KISS principle here and keep it very simple. Uh, so we're just going to say that it's all of these three things, the wages, the interest, the rent, and the profit earned in production. So if we go up here uh, to this example, pretend you're the landowner, how much are you earning off of selling your product? Okay, you're earning $500, and that would go uh, here. Okay, the timber company, you have people earning wages in the timber company, you have people earning uh, interest for any machinery that they have. Sorry about that. Uh, you have uh, rent from maybe the land that they're on, and you have profit. So any of the extra profit after you pay all of your expenses, any profit would go to the timber, timber owners. And so we take this $5,000 that they earn, turns into everybody's income at the timber company. All right, And then it goes on to the birdhouse makers. The birdhouse maker, they pay wages, they pay interest, they pay rent, and they make profit. Okay, That becomes... The, 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 the money that they earn becomes the, the owner's profit. And so uh, all of these places pay all of these sources of income. And so when you add it up, you know, remember spending becomes income. And so you would look at it and say, all of the income that's paid out to produce this stuff as we go up the line is going to equal $25,000. Okay? And so that's all the income approach is. It just looks, it, it's a measure of the income that's earned in the production of a product. And so this final birdhouse that we have here, what was all the income that was earned in the production of that? And let's say that we had, I don't know, 10,000, well, maybe a 1,000 of them, you know? 
not a thousand dollars. We had a thousand birdhouses, and so in the production of this thousand birdhouses, think of all the wages, the interest, the rent, and the profit that was earned, was accumulated through that production, and that's what would be the income method. All right. And so if you remember on the circular flow, this is the bottom uh, curve. All right. Uh, now the last approach that we want to look at, and this is one that we'll look at a fair amount, is the expenditure approach. Expenditure approach. And so the general sense of this is, is that we want to look at all the purchasers. So in an economy, who buys the stuff? All right. And so certainly we know that you and I, as consumers, we buy stuff. Who else buys stuff? All right. Uh, businesses. What do they buy? Businesses buy investments. So they buy machinery and things like that. That's what I mean by investments. So con consumers will buy stuff. Businesses buy stuff. Who else buys stuff? Uh, we have governments. They buy stuff. They buy a lot of stuff. Uh, just look at the federal budget. They buy tons and tons of stuff. Uh, and then we have who else buys stuff? All right, we have the global market, and so uh, we want to look at imports and exports, and so we'll just uh, call it net exports. All right, we calculate that by taking the exports, total exports minus the total imports. And so if you look at the, the, the who buys the stuff in the economy, this is pretty much it. You know, for the most part, if something's bought, it's either bought by a consumer, by a business, by the government, or it's in the, the foreign exchange, the foreign market. All right. And so all we want to do is take how much we spend, so how much do consumers spend, the dollar value of consumers, of businesses, of governments, and the, the value of the net exports, and we add all that stuff up, and we will come up with the, the ex expenditure approach to measuring GDP. And so let's say consumers bought, uh, sorry about that, get that out of the way. Let's say consumers bought $700 worth of stuff, all right? And businesses, let's say they bought about $18 I'm sorry, $180 worth of stuff, and let's say government bought uh, $2,000 worth of stuff, uh, and let's say, let's see, it's $900,080, and so let's say that exports minus imports uh, were something, somewhere around, let's say we have a, a trade deficit, all right, and so if it's a negative 80, that means that imports are greater than exports. And so what we would want to do here is just add them up. So 700 plus 180 plus 200 minus 80, and this gives us 1,000. All right? And so this is how you would calculate the expenditure approach to, uh, to measuring GDP. And so I, did, I chose these numbers for a reason. Uh, if you look at uh, the percentages, this is roughly, so consumer spending is roughly, roughly, 70% uh, of all GDP. Business investments are roughly, you know, 17 or 18 percent of GDP. Government spending, uh, it's a little bit high right now. It's somewhere around 20 percent, but on average, it's you know, like 18 to 20 percent of GDP. And in the U.S., uh, this has always run around somewhere around negative, not always, but uh, currently for the last 10 or 15, 20 years, it's always run around negative 3 percent of GDP. So when you add all that up, so these percentages are somewhat equivalent to what the, the numbers would be today. Maybe not that one, but anyhow. Uh, so this is the expenditure approach. All right, and so those are the three different ways to measure GDP using the three different methods. And if you recall, uh, let me get to another slide real quick. I uh, just want to show you, we'll get up to all that in just a second. If you remember the circular flow, uh, we've got, got households, we've got firms, and government, I'll just say banks, and foreign market. All right, and so the circular flow, these are, this is our five sector model. And the circular flow of income goes through whoops, the goods and services market or the product market. So the money goes this way, and then it goes flows from the firms into the factor market. And so the money keeps oh, flowing this way. All right. Uh, and then we had the leakages from the government to the government, the banks, and the foreign markets. And then uh, that money gets spent back in the goods and services. and in the injections, but anyway, so the point of this was uh, if we take 
this curve here, the value of this is going to give us which one? What do you think? This will give us the expenditure approach. Expenditure approach to GDP. All right, uh, and that's because remember the uh, the four people that bought the stuff is the households, the governments, and the firms are doing it through investments, and the foreign exchange market. So these four, that looks like five, but it's four. It should be one, two, three, and four. Uh, they're buying the stuff, and the, again, the firm's doing it through investments. So this is the expenditure approach, and if you recall, uh, we have to do the output approach. It is coming back, and it's the, in exchange for what we're getting for the money. And so we would say that the income coming here, this is the output method. And the income approach is down here. This is, well, to be very precise, it's going to be this one. Uh, that would be how you measure the income approach. All right. Uh, so that's it. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at uh, how to calculate it uh, given some numbers. So uh, until next time.